Hey, welcome back to the channel. Um, thanks for stopping in to check out my newest video. Uh, this video is for the 2022 um, Corduroy Enduro uh, race held in Gooderham, Ontario. Uh, it was a great race this year. Um, I raced in the expert class, so red plate, so I was able to do um, the entire course. But just before we get to um, just before we get to the actual race itself, just a couple of things that I wanted to go over. So first of all, we rented an Airbnb, you can see here in the video, um, was absolutely amazing, great place to stay. I really think this is a really good option for people who wanna race around this area. There isn't much in the way of uh, hotels. You can camp on site, obviously, but having, you know, power and, uh, and a hot tub and a sauna and all of this, you know, those, those amenities, um, is really really cool also uh, just very quickly so I got some new uh, gear from Beta Canada um, they really hooked me up so uh, Liat 5.5 enduro boots the Johnny Walker um, special edition boots I got these just a couple of weeks before the corduroy let me tell you uh, you put these on your feet they fit right away they're super comfortable there's almost no break-in required um, and they were absolutely great during the race and I really did need a new set of boots so I really do thank Beta Canada Canada for coming through on these as well I got one of the 9.5 carbon helmets after going from a Fox v3 this carbon helmet feels so light um, it's easy on the neck it has great features uh, but really it's just so light it has an internal hose routing system for um, your drinking tubes if you want to use it uh, but it is a great helmet and I just again wanted to give a quick shout out to Beta Canada for making it happen in uh, V110. Hey, Sean. Hey. How's it going? I recognize you. I'm like, who's this, sir? I'm going to go, uh, see you, man. I'm going to go sign a waiver. Oh, nice. Try to take some bikes. So I got about an hour or so. Take yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. What is it? Race fuel. Oh. I don't want to smell it again. I can smell it from here. Sweet. Try to bring it back in one piece. Good luck. <laughs> All right, so one of the coolest things about the corduroys, if you show up there early, there's uh, the super demo days are back. So a bunch of manufacturers, Gas Gas, Husqvarna, Yamaha, KTM, Beta Canada, uh, we're all there and you could try out a bunch of uh, different bikes. So it was really cool to be able to jump on a few different manufacturers. I'm not gonna put a lot of footage of that in here because it's just the same test track. Um, here I'm on a Gas Gas, obviously Big Iron Moto um, is on a Gas Gas and he was helping running the booth and uh, it was easy to jump onto a bike and, and feel the difference. My bike being carved, this being TPI, um, it was, it was just neat to kind of feel the difference. Um, this was an incredibly snappy bike um, in comparison to mine. The, the power hit was, uh, um, you know, definitely uh, much more pronounced, but um, it was a great bike and uh, the demo days are an absolutely fantastic opportunity to get out and ride a bunch of different motorcycles. Yeah, it's uh, that's a lot different. Holy cow! Is it? Yeah. Like lighter? Uh, yeah, and like way more, like super responsive. Yeah. It's yeah. Very, very like snappy. Yeah, very snappy. Yeah, very snappy. Yeah. But that's a 252, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. Nice. It's a lot more like a snappy motocross bike, almost, yeah. right? Right. So the corduroy is definitely back. Lots of manufacturers, lots of shops, um, you know, tons and tons of people, lots of riders, great atmosphere. Uh, the weather was great for the first uh, two days, so it was, uh, it was really good to be back. So of course, um, the first night, this is Friday, heading to sound check. Um, you gotta go sound check your bike, then you have to go register, which I did just after um, the sound check. And then we all stuck around for the riders meeting um, provided that evening. The riders meeting can provide you with a lot of really good information. Um, I highly recommend staying for the riders meeting. Uh, it is mandatory, um, 
but don't think just because it's mandatory um, that you're not going to get anything useful. It is very useful, especially for um, riders who have not ridden the corduroy uh, very many times. section so you can see that a uh, little bit of footage there you'll notice watching the video that um, in the group that I was in I was in row 22a I had a couple of pro riders um, really really fast riders and uh, I knew who they were from uh, from Quebec and from the FMSQ and uh, I mean they're blazing fast so uh, for each test I let those two guys go uh, I'm not in the mix with them I know that they know that and I just would have gotten in their way, so um, I let them go, obviously. You'll also notice in a lot of tests, although I don't uh, necessarily put footage in every test, but I had Russell Bobbitt behind me. He ended up winning the cord, um, and he is blazing fast, ridiculously fast. I could not believe how quickly he would catch up to me on every single test and pass me, and I think he was, he was reaching some of the pros um, on my line, and maybe even into uh, you know, further lines up front, depending on how long um, the test was. How he was on the gas through the woods the way he was was absolutely incredible, so very cool. So red plate, you can see, you know, there's uh, lots of different color arrows out there, orange and pink. There was a couple of different splits, especially on day one, um, although they were on day two as well, where uh, any red plates uh, had to do extra sections, and the majority of the time, those extra sections were, uh, were extra fun and extra spicy, so, uh, you know, a lot of fun. Um, what I would say as you're watching the video, and you'll see as it comes up, um, you know, I've always talked about bike prep. I've always been pretty big on bike maintenance. I think I was big on bike maintenance again this year, but I had an issue that I, I did not foresee coming, and I'm not exactly sure still um, to this day where it originated from. So my fan um, was somehow draining my battery to the point of not having any starter. So I was fine on day one. Um, I got out and I was riding and I was actually having a, what I was considering to be an amazing ride. Um, having bumped up from novice to expert last year, uh, I thought that potentially I was going to run into, uh, you know, more issues or the trails were going to be, um, you know, much more challenging. But, I, you know, my riding has come again another, um, you know, quite a ways in, in a year and I feel good on the bike. I've gotten my suspension done this year, so I feel good on it. So I was having a really good day. Um, starting at the Katva test, which was uh, maybe four or five tests out um, from the end of the day, so still quite a bit of the day left, um, my starter stopped working. And so I'm not posting footage from uh, every single test from uh, both days. I'm just going to post a few highlights and give you some footage while you listen to my story. Uh, but suffice to say, um, doing some of the pro sections without a starter, and I don't have a backup kickstart, which will be remedied for next year uh, now that I've lived through it once. But not having a starter is uh, is something else entirely. If you do make it into the video, 
um, and you get you know to where I'm on Green Mountain you will see some of what I went through uh, without a starter so bump starting um, on pro tracks um, you know places like Green Mountain literally turning back down to bump start to turn around and go back up somewhere I had already been um, or having to go off trail bump start to then work my way back just to get back on the single trail single track um, I was completely completely exhausted after day two now uh, Beta Canada and Langs were there and they stepped up in a big way to help me with my 15 minutes at the end of the day before my bike went into impound um, and we got quite a bit done to it and we replaced the battery and we thought that's what we, that's what the problem was was that the stock battery had just died but it turned out to be the fan which I only then figured out after I had to bump start it through a few tests on day two as well and what I ended up doing was just pulling the fuse for the fan thinking what could have hurt um, bumping it, riding a test, coming out at the end of the test, shutting it down and then realizing that the bike would start back up because uh, the stator was actually charging the battery. So a little bit of, uh, you know, a few electrical gremlins to work out. Um, definitely not Beta's fault. It was an aftermarket trail tech fan um, with a shave down thermostat. It's, it's not really uh, a bike specific and it's certainly not an OEM part. Um, so I do not blame Beta for that whatsoever. Uh, the bike worked flawlessly actually uh, considering everything I put it through um, no starter or anything if you pay attention on uh, to my handlebars on Green Mountain you're going to see that I actually didn't even have a, a kill switch on it either because we had taken the switch off at one of the gas stops trying to fix it um, and that obviously didn't work so uh, we didn't have time to put it back on um, so it was a great day um, and it was a great race and it was a great two days of racing. I'm uh, super happy that I was able to finish both days and get my, uh, um, you know, completion medal as it were and uh, finisher medal for uh, the core 2022 in uh, the expert class, so in the red plate class, riding the entire horde. And I will say from novice uh, to the expert class, it becomes a completely different race and, um, you know, not to take away um, from anything that the, uh, the other classes do, because the court is a tough race no matter what, but um, you know, the whole thing uh, that the red plates do is, uh, is a completely different battle. Um, you know, it's hard to quantify, but uh, I'm glad I did it and uh, I'm happy I finished and I did not end up last uh, in the expert class, even though uh, my time on Green Mountain was uh, pretty abysmal with all the bump starting and everything like that. So really happy and super pumped and really motivated for next year. So we'll see what it brings. starter. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. Right. Let's back in here and take a rest. No, like I don't have a kickstart either. Like I'm bump starting if I stall. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Well, keep it running then. Well, this guy took, he went deep in there and shot straight up.
Sorry guys, I don't have a starter, so I need to bump start. I'll get out of the way. Well, we're gonna give this a go right here. on trying to get my starter working that I forgot to fill my camel back. So uh, not only was I having to bump start my bike on Green Mountain uh, more than once, which took me off trail, and it was uh, a bit of an effort even just to make it back onto the single track. I didn't have any water. Um, because I didn't have a battery right here, you can see my bike uh, is starting to overheat. Now I'm also not riding. Um, at the speed that I normally can ride because like I said, I'm just exhausted at this point. Every stall uh, turned into, you know, this, this major trial and tribulation. Um, so anyway, uh, made it through it. Uh, you know, a little bit of uh, patience here. Let the bike cool down. I was able to get some water to put back into the rad. Um, and then you're going to see that uh, the whole thing starts again. So it's a, it's a push downhill. Uh, right here to get it bump started a turn and then work my way up what was probably the worst section of the race for me um, You know Greens Mountain is always fun uh, Wasn't so fun on day one uh, Here without a starter so it is what it is, but uh, I survived it made it out the other end and um, You know was able to to get back and uh, do some work before day two um, And day two was uh, was a great day actually and I really like how in the court this year they really front end loaded um, you know probably a lot of the most challenging stuff that you find so I really like that after day one Green's Mountain was, uh, was over and you're not fighting up this at the end of day two um, you know trying to beat your time um, you know going late into the day it really made uh, the court from a scheduling and planning perspective a lot nicer as well because you know, Sunday you were able to kind of wrap up uh, in the afternoon and um, I felt pretty good at the end of uh, Sunday. I felt like I could drive home and so on and so forth, whereas I did not feel that way at the end of uh, at the end of Saturday. It was nice to go back. I had no problem sleeping on Saturday night um, and that's just what it was. So Greens Mountain, um, you know, uh, is what it is, was what it was. Um, Thanks to anybody who, uh, who threw some water at me. This lady here, oh my God, uh, absolute lifesaver, gave me a bottle of water, took the garbage back. Um, like I said, I didn't have any water, so I was trying to survive until the end of this day and just oh. make it back. And little things like this uh, really kind of re-motivate you to get going again. So uh, thanks to her, I don't you know okay? who she is, um, but I was super happy to run into her on the mountain. Um, yeah, so the rest of this continue to watch me struggle. Uh, this was a rough, rough section for me. Um, but I survived it and I can't wait to attack it again next year. Parker 
racing team. Come on, X. One, go. definitely not for the faint of heart um, and um, you know it, it does it should should warrant some level of consideration that's for sure because uh, it is a, it is a slightly different um, different race um, you know having said that I would say that uh, having the support and having a support element there was incredibly important uh, for me so that would be kind of one of my takeaways um, you know bike setup is always going to be a takeaway you need to be comfortable with your bike make sure as many things are worked out as possible um, Beta Canada Stephen Howland said something to me at the court that I'll you know kind of uh, keep in the back of my mind uh, for all future court and hard enduro events but you know he said it's the court you need a backup to the backup so um, you know no kickstarter on my bike being kind of the first mistake um, you know and so on from there but what I would say from a support perspective is having a support element there so you know a truck or, or a family member or somebody that can follow you around to the different fuel stops um, you know and carry some extra things we had spares for everything now that was largely due to Veda Canada and Langs Off-Road um, who I can't thank enough for their support but um, you know we had spares for everything um, and it really makes a huge difference so whether it's you know levers or gear shifters or um, in my case batteries and you know switches and bolts and you know tools and all this and all this stuff um, you know yeah you might have to limp through a test or two but if you can make it to a fuel spot or you can make it back at the end of the day um, and you have this stuff on hand I mean we had spare tires and rims and we had absolutely everything, so we were ready, um, and it, you know, it definitely proved valuable because there wasn't one bike I don't think that came in at the end of the day that didn't need something, and you only had 15 minutes to do it. So you know, spares uh, big time, but having a, that support structure I think very very important. I would I think, and you know, I'm kind of generalizing here, um, but at minimum, uh, anybody who's running Red Plate uh, has whatever their support 
um, you know, concept is well thought out. And whether that's just, hey, this is how I mark my cans, and this is this is what I tape onto my gas cans, or this is the bag I tape onto my gas cans, or this is what I'm going to do at these different gas stops, and this is how I'm going to lay my tools out at my truck or my trailer at the end. So when I get back and before my bike goes into impound, I don't have to look for things. I know where everything is. At the very minimum, it's that. Um, for those of us who are lucky enough and, and, and privileged enough to have, you know, some sort of support element follow us around, I, I thought it was invaluable. Um, you know, I don't. Maybe there's a business idea in there where you could get paid to uh, provide that level of support for riders who could, uh, you know, subscription-based um, look into support for big rides like this. But I tell you, having having a truck in the beta truck with you know individuals with beta gear on and jackets on waiting for you and you knew right where to go you didn't have to waste any time um looking through trailers for your fuel containers or anything like that it was all there and uh, and the guys were absolutely great and you know the henderson family as well uh kenny henderson and his dad um you know great great people um was a blast to hang out with them at the different fuel stops but you know i pulled up and you know, somebody was filling my bike and, you know, somebody was offering me a drink of some sort and somebody was, you know, getting me a sandwich and, uh, you know, it, it was it was a very, very cool experience and it, and it made a huge difference. So, anyway, there's a couple of takeaways. I had a couple of takeaways last year, if you watch my video from last year, again, in Novice, but it had to do with tires, so on and so forth. Uh, you know, just to close that out, I, have an, I ran a Dunlop MX-53 on the front this year. Um, and I ran a, a Kenda Ibex on the rear, and I thought it was a great setup. So um, thanks a lot for sticking around. Thanks uh, to my subscribers. Thanks to the support. Follow me on Instagram. And uh, again, if you've stuck around this long, thank you very much. <laughs> a firecracker under your ass, buddy. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> fucking gone. Oh. <sighs>